my Sakadawa greetings to everyone. Uh, Saka, the meaning of the Sakadawa is Saka is the name of a star that appear in the sky prominently during the uh, fourth Tibetan lunar calendar, fourth Tibetan lunar month. And Dawa is, the meaning of the Dawa is a month. So this month, the Saka Dawa is named after a star. So on the fourth Tibetan lunar month, several Buddha's uh, activities had happened, such as they entered, he entered the womb of his mother, he uh, achieved enlightenment, he passed away, and also he ordained as a monk. And also he birthed, he born on this month. So this month is uh, considered to be very auspicious. Um, so whatever wholesome deed you do will have 100,000 times effectful. But it is important for us to understand by 100,000, it is just a symbolical um, number which implies that whatever you do in this month, whatever wholesome deed you do in this month, will have more effect than any other usual month. So it is not literally meaning that whatever you do in this month will have exactly 100,000 uh, effect. But there's also one thing that we have to understand is that why 100,000 times, you know, especially in this month? Why only this month? So it is, we, should, we must understand that it is not only this month that has that effect, that, that has that um, energy to turn our wholesome deed into, multiply it into 100,000. The first month of Tibetan lunar uh, calendar, uh, we call it Chudul Dawa. It can be translated into English as uh, the month of miracle or miraculous month, where Buddha uh, display a lot of miracle to tame certain people during his time. So even in that month, it considered to be very auspicious. So whatever you do, uh, wholesome deed you perform, will have hundred thousand um, more effectful. So. We call it Bumgyur Dawa, right? So it is not only this month that has that effect, that uh, multiply your wholesome deed into 100,000 times. The second thing that we have to understand is that why, you know, this auspicious month has the energy or ability to turn or, or multiply our good deed into 100,000 times. It is quite hard to, it is not simple to explain, but I'll try, my, you know, my best. In simple way, first of all, Buddha Shakyamuni, he's not just a random Buddha. This is very important for us to know, because uh, Buddha Shakyamuni is the present Buddha of this time, or maybe a Buddha in charge of this time. So, in terms of karma, we are very close, or, or we are, closely linked or related to Buddha Shakyamuni. And not only him, but it's also his activities that he have done during his time in this month. So that's why this month become very auspicious for those people who have devotion toward Buddha. So during those times, during this month, when Buddha made so many uh, thousand, millions of wishes, prayers, so this month, all those wishes and prayers are more attentive than any other month. So that's why when we do the prayers, that's why when we do the wholesome deed, like a, you know, a, a practice of generosity, that deed, that wholesome deed has uh, the effect, the energy to turn our deed into um, 100,000 times. So this, is, this might be the one reason, but there's also some other reasons that I will explain. We usually talk about energy, we talk about uh, vibration, we talk about frequency. So everything in this world, it's made up, up of energy. And that energy sort of like uh, 
vibrates in different frequency or certain frequency. So, for example, as I said, everything in this world is create, created or made up on energy, right? For example, uh, certain places and certain time have that energy. For example, in my own experience, for, for also for many other people, uh, a place like uh, Bodhanath in Nepal, Kathmandu, whenever we see that stupa, you know, it gives us a certain feeling, you know, it tame our mind, <coughs> it uh, remove our uh, unwholesome thoughts that we carry, you know, and also it makes us feel very blissful. So that places, and also like a Bodh Gaya stupa, whenever we enter that stupa, it really blesses us, we feel very blissful. Because that stupa, those places have that kind of energy to make us feel faithful, makes us feel uh, very blessed, really, whoever entered that stupa, I, I, I've never witnessed anybody get angry in, in that stupa because of that energy. So it is very important for us to understand that certain places and certain time have that different energy. And, and also some, uh, some other examples I would like to express is that, like a monsoon, right, a time. During the monsoon, we are more susceptible to flu. We often get sick during the monsoon because that the time carries a certain energy that makes us you know susceptible to uh, you know flu like cold those those kind of uh, uh, sickness right so it is because that time has that certain energy also like uh, you know the season for the dogs to do the breedings the mate dog uh, dog mating season so there's a certain season right like a spring for the dog they do the breedings you know the matings not like any other months Mostly during the season, mostly during the spring season, the dog do the breedings, the dog do the matings, you know, because that season has that, that season, that time carries a, a certain energy that makes dog to do the breedings and, 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 and matings, right? But certain place, certain times, it carries uh, energy, it has a different vibe, and that energy vibrates in different frequencies. So this is the one, this might be the one reason why I say that um, during those auspicious months, whatever we do uh, has the ability to multiply it into 100,000. But 100,000 is not a literally meaning, right? It means that it will multiply into many times. It's just a symbolical number. So this month, as I say, Buddha Shakyamuni has did a lot of prayers, has uh, made a lot of wishes, so those wishes are very attentive in this month. That's why whenever we do in this month, whatever we do in this month has uh, the energy to have 100,000 times effectful. This is the reason, this is my own personal reason. In short, you know, this month has that energy. As I say, everything is made up of energy and every energy has the uh, different uh, vibration and that vibration uh, the energy vibrates to different frequencies now one thing that we can do uh, one one good thing that we can do in this month is to refrain yourself from consuming meat this is one of a good thing because as I believe that uh, refraining yourself from eating meat is actually the ultimate act ultimate act of releasing life because it is also the safest way to release life is not to eat meat but uh, certain people have their own doubt that it doesn't matter if we, even I don't eat meat you know the number of animals that are gonna be butchered is not gonna be less but it's not true actually you know um, even even a small number can help the reason why those animals are being butchered is because there are people who buy those meat. That's why if there's no one who buys the meat, then, then there will be no animal going to be butchered. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is that do not be involved in the butchering of animal in any mean, in any small way, you know. And usually we talk about love a lot. You know, we talk about love and compassion a lot. But I feel, you know, it's quite hard. To be honest, it's quite weird to talk about love and compassion 
when we have a dead animal in our plate. This is my own personal feeling. I think it's quite hard to talk about love and compassion when we have a dead animal in our plate. Maybe I sound very harsh on this um, point, but um, please do not be discouraged when I say it is hard to uh, practice love and compassion when we have a dead animal on our plate because uh, love and compassion can happen in different form, different size, different times. You know why? Because, for example, when we were very young, uh, we like to go to zoo, right? Because why? Because we love animals very much. That's why we go to zoo, enjoy looking at those animals, the beautiful creatures. But when we grow up and we understand, you know, the difficulty they have to face to be in the zoo, you know, they have they've been confined in a very uh, small cages. So when we understand this, the, the suffering of those animals who have to stay in zoo, right? Then we stop going to zoo because why? Because we love animal. You know, so th you can see there's a transformation of love and your compassion, right? When we were young, we go to zoo because we love animal. When we grow up, we don't go to zoo because we love animal. So there's a transformation. So, uh, so, so when I say it is hard to be, it's ha hard to practice love and compassion when you consume a meat, please uh, do not be discouraged. There's also another way to love, practice love and compassion, because love and compassion, as I said, has a different size, can, be, uh, can be happen in different form and times, because our inner quality, these are very transformative. It, it can be transformed.